Hi, thanks for joining me today. Are you step parenting a teenager or somebody in their 20s who really has no idea how to behave and is actually very rude and objectionable to you? post once a week so subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and I'll let you know every time I post. So often step parents move into a family home or form a new family just when the teenagers are having to strike out and become their own people. Now the thing about doing that is it makes teenagers have to look into themselves and become much more self-centered than they've ever been before. What are they going to want to do? How are they going to sort out their life, their relationships? And they want to be different from their parents. They think they can do it all. It's a very difficult time for, for particularly for loving parents to manage, but I would also say as difficult, if not more so, for a step-parent to be alongside a stepchild when they're making this transition from home. It doesn't matter how nice the child is, it doesn't matter how good a person they're going to be when they grow up, but at the time that they're making this transition, they can be really difficult in every way. They can be selfish, untidy, ungenerous, rude. They can, they can experiment with saying what they want without regard for the, the effects of that. It can be as bad as it can get. Now, for parents who've loved their children early on, this becomes a difficult phase, but afterwards relationships normally re-establish when the child has got their independence and then starts coming home. But for step-parents, this behaviour can a, be intolerable and totally unacceptable, which it is. It can also damage the relationship permanently because they didn't have that initial childhood time, or even if they did sometimes, the relationship between the stepchild and the step-parent can be permanently damaged forever during those teenage years. Stuff happens that can't be forgiven, that isn't forgotten, and that really is that bad. So then, later, the stepchild still doesn't re-engage with the step-parent. Now, my thinking here is that if you're the step-parent in this situation, it's really important that you see a teenage child or a child in their 20s who is behaving really badly to you and it's personal so it doesn't look as though it's just normal teenage behaviour, it looks as though it's directed at you as only poor behaviour while they go through this stage. If you look at it like that then you can take the hurt as just them growing up. If you can do that, then you don't get per help, hurt personally. Now to do that, you need to truly reward yourself. They say it's called nurturing yourself, but I mean nurturing yourself. You need to set about and say, this teenager is going to be terrible for six years and for six years their behaviour is not going to bother me and in return 
I am going to reward myself or nurture myself in the following ways. And then you have a hope that you can stomach this poor behaviour, and it is poor, until things change again. And then if you've nurtured yourself sufficiently and rewarded yourself for going through this nasty period, then you might be in a position that you can re-engage with the stepchild when they're older and independent and an adult themselves and a, an, a much nicer relationship is available and possible. Now, things you can do to help yourself during this, let's call it a six year period. Number one, give the relationship as much energy and effort that you can afford to give. But don't go over the top, especially if you're a new step parent, you can fall into this trap where you make huge amounts of effort to make things a happy occasion or things go well or make events good, but you get very little thanks or proper you know, reward for that from the stepchild. Only put in the effort and energy that you want to for yourself. If you give too much, then you end up feeling resentful. So don't. Just make do. Do enough organising, enough so you feel okay about it, but not more. Secondly, organise things so that people aren't around you all the time for too long or too much. So if people come to stay for the weekend, your teenager or your 20 something or the other, have things planned for the weekend to go out and do. That could be for yourself, it could be for you and your partner, or it could be for the stepchild to do, or the stepchild to do with you. But don't just leave things to chance. Make the most of everything that you can think of that gets you out and the time being used structurally. Third, don't see what they say as a personal insult. They are only experimenting with what they can and can't say and with being an adult. So, so easier said than done, but just see their things that they get wrong as being their problem. Next, be careful how you cast yourself into a role Make sure that the biological parent picks up the slack and so as much as possible set it out so don't see it as your role to clear up, run errands, pick them up and drop them places, sort out meals, any of those kinds of things. Look to sharing them, delegate rather than feeling as though you, that is your job to do. Make sure you look at your role in this and make sure that you aren't doing more in your role than you're prepared to do and therefore build resentment again. And don't forget other sessions that I've given on communication. It's not a bad idea to keep communication regular so there's stuff that's communicated at the beginning of any visit and possibly at the end where you're laying out what is going to be happening during this trip or stay and what isn't. So often teenagers and people in their early 20s really have no idea what an enormous burden it can be to be doing everything when they, and they don't even really know what they could do to do stuff to help. And so it's about 
stating the obvious, communicating, getting them to understand what your expectations are and that can help you. And then of course there is the nurturing of yourself and rewarding yourself for doing this for this young step person who is a really difficult person while they go through that period of learning how to live harmoniously with other people. <laughs> we run workshops, sessions, an email response service, and we write booklets. You can find links to our social media and website in the description box below.